Are you ready for liquid cultures? Do you need to scale fast or are you trying to compete with wholesale prices? Liquid cultures are one of the most powerful tools in mushroom farming, but in order to successfully utilize this tool, you have to have a really good foundational skill set of aseptic technique and culture purification. What's up, Mushroom Fam? It's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in Sedalia, Colorado at my mushroom farm. And today I'm gonna talk about liquid cultures. So compared to a farm that is limited in buying their grain spawn, when you utilize a liquid culture like this, you get unlimited grain spawn production. So another powerful reason to use liquid culture is that you get to procure your own genetics and you can customize it to your environment or to your customer's demands. If you'd like to learn more about this process specifically, check out our ebook, Growing Gourmet Mushrooms for Market, in the link in the description below. So in order to decide if you need to take the leap into liquid culture, you kind of have to decide on the scale of your farm. Are your customers asking for bulk pricing? Are you trying to compete against wholesale prices? All these questions, once they start to arise, you should consider switching over to liquid culture. In order to utilize the power of liquid culture, you should already be making your own grain spawn and you should already have the capabilities to make a complete grow block. Otherwise, you're just going to be losing those margins in buying those products anyway. So before you even think about doing liquid culture, you have to have the foundational skill set to produce your own grow blocks in house. Before you even think about working with liquid cultures, you're going to want to consider getting a flow hood. So one of the biggest caveats of working with liquid cultures is that they're very easy to contaminate and they're very difficult to detect contamination until it's further down the line. So a flow hood is going to provide a lot of protection for your, your cultures and it's going to increase your success dramatically enough to make it worth it. If you don't have a flow hood, you might be able to get away with it in a still air box, but you're looking at, you know, a 40 to 50% success rate compared to a 90 plus percent rate, which, you know, when you're farming, having that success is extremely important. There's many different types of mycology lids when you're making a liquid culture. The basic lid, however, is gonna incorporate two things. So you're going to need an injection port. This is the port of entry where you're inoculating your media with the mycelium. So I recommend getting these self-healing injection ports. Um, if you're kind of tight on capital or you're just a DIYer, you can make your own using silicone. I've seen that and I've used it myself, but I think that the price on these injection ports is you know, very economical. So you might wanna skip that step and go right to the self-healing injection port. Now the next important piece in a mycology lid is the air filter. So on my lids, I use these syringe filter so that's not meant to inject the mycelium through the filter with a syringe, but it's a, it's a 0.2 micron filter that filters out any contaminants that could enter the system. Further anatomy that you can add to your liquid culture lids are going to be this tubing here. So I really like this because you don't have to tilt your jar when you're working with it. Um, which that could be a, a source for contamination. If this liquid gets into the threading on the lid, then that could bring in contaminants and ruin your whole liquid culture. Mm -hmm. 
in addition to the jar, you're going to need a stir bar and a stir plate. So that's another important material when you're working with liquid culture. You're also going to need the nutrients. So you can use uh, honey. So I use a 5% honey water for all of my liquid cultures. You can also use caro. You can use peptone or light malt extract. Those are all very common recipes. It just depends on what strains you're growing. I found that honey water works the best because it's the most versatile, um, but you can dial in your own nutrients according to your strains by experimenting on your own time. Another material that you're going to need is a syringe, and that's going to allow you to transfer the material from your jar into your spawn bag or your spawn jar. You're gonna need sterile syringes. Make sure that you get um, sterile syringes or you can use a glass syringe and then sterilize it yourself. Anywhere from about 10 to 15 milliliters is the standard uh, volume of syringe that you're gonna need. You can get away with less, but that shouldn't be used for inoculation, maybe just to store your genetics. And you're gonna wanna use a one-time syringe and not reuse them because the chances for contamination are pretty high with using liquid culture like we talked about. So by using a fresh needle every time and a fresh syringe, you're guaranteeing that it's sterile. Okay, so now that you have all the materials laid out for your liquid culture, you're gonna want to consider the space that you need. So we talked about the flow hood, so you're gonna want a safe and clean environment like under the flow hood behind me here. And you're also going to want to have a temperature controlled environment. The mycelium is, is temperature sensitive in a liquid culture. So you're gonna to wanna to prevent it from freezing. Some warmer strains um, are gonna require almost a room temperature controlled. And then you're gonna to wanna to make sure that they don't overheat and kill the mycelium. So anywhere from about 70 degrees to 75 degrees is ideal. So you can either get an incubator like I have behind me, or just make sure that your building or your lab is around room temperature and that should be good enough. As far as lighting, it's not as necessary. Ideally, you should have your cultures stored in the dark, but uh, in nature, they're exposed to the light all the time. So it's not super necessary to have light or to not have light, um, but that's a, definitely a consideration. You don't wanna have direct sunlight because the UV can harm the, the mycelium. And then as far as where you wanna store your liquid cultures, I recommend keeping them in the flow hood where they're protected from contamination. Or if you have a bin or something that you can seal to make sure that nothing gets into the cultures, um, that's ideal. Okay, so the consideration after the materials is going to be your genetics. So starting from a spore print um, is very valuable in liquid culture production because you'll be able to tailor your culture according to your environment. If you have a bunch of mushroom genetics and you're trying to find the ideal mushroom to grow in your specific environment, you can select from a spore print the most viable strains that will grow in your environment. So I would recommend streaking them onto a Petri dish and observing for the most rigorous growth and then isolating those genetics and growing them in your own grow tents just to make sure that they'll fruit out at the temperature and the conditions that are present on your farm. Now, by starting from spores, you can kind of tailor those genetics to your specific grow as opposed to buying commercial spawn, then you kind of have to tailor your farm to what that spawn prefers. So that's gonna create a better efficient farm for you in the long term because you're adapting your genetics to the current conditions 
which is ultimately going to be less um, energy dependent in the long term. Once you purify a culture onto a Petri dish, you're going to want to transfer it into a jar. One of the benefits of having the liquid culture jar is that it's not exposed to the environment like a Petri dish. So once you open that Petri dish, you're exposing that mycelium to the air, where if you inject it into a liquid culture jar, it's only a liability at the tip of that jar where you're making your transfers. Now that we have our liquid culture growing, um, it would be as simple as adding a piece of mycelium to the sterilized media. Then you're gonna wanna spin it on the stir plate. And once you start to get healthy amount of mycelium, you'll be able to observe that growth in the jar. One of the caveats of growing in a liquid media is that it's gonna consume that media rapidly and eventually it's gonna try to fruit or make its desperate last attempts to reproduce. And oftentimes that will happen as like a SCOBY on top of the surface. So that will alert you that it's time to refresh your culture. In my farm here, I, um, I'll transfer my cultures over every six months. Um, you can also reduce this time by lowering the nutrients in the solution. So you, instead of using a 5% honey solution, maybe you can lower it to a 1% honey solution. And then you'll only have to revigorate your cultures every year compared to every six months. So this is something you could play around on your farm. The downside of lowering the nutrients is that it will take a little bit longer to grow in the first place. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you watch Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot about liquid culture and I hope you're ready to make the leap. If you'd like to learn more details about making your own liquid culture, check out our ebook Growing Gourmet Mushrooms for Market. It's in the link in the description below.